Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing erotic acid urea and how it relates to anemia. So if you guys don't know, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash madmedicine, uh, you can find all of our Hemonk videos for step one in a convenient playlist. Just search Hemonk and it'll pop up. While you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And with that being said, let's talk about macrocytic anemias. These are anemias that are classified by an MCV that is greater than 100. Keep in mind, a normal MCV is usually 80 to 100. Anything more than 100 is going to be macrocytic. Macro meaning it's going to be a large red blood cell size. When it comes to the MCH and the MCHC, they're usually either going to be normal to high, and uh, you can subdivide macrocytic anemias based off of megaloblasts. So you can have megaloblastic anemias due to nuclear deficits, as well as non-megaloblastic anemias, which are not due to nuclear deficits. So when it comes to megaloblastic anemias, you can have issues in DNA synthesis, like the ones we've been talking about and what we're going to talk about today, erotic acid urea, or you can have an issue with DNA repair, which occurs in Fanconi anemia. Now, we have already talked about these two uh, folate and vitamin B12 deficiencies in our previous video, so go check them out. Today we're going to be talking about erotic acid urea. Now you can also have macrocytic anemia caused by non-megaloblastic anemia, like in the case with diamond black fan anemia, and in liver disease and alcoholism, which we've already covered in several videos uh, in our lecture site, so we're not going to be going over that uh, in this case. Now let's talk about erotic acid urea. This is an autosomal recessive disorder, okay? Very important to understand the genetics because test takers like to ask you these stupid questions, and you should just know them. Now, erotic acid urea usually causes a problem, uh, is usually caused by a problem with de novo pyrimidine synthesis. Remember the pyrimidines and the purines? Well, the pyrimidines are thymine and cytosine, so if you have an issue with the synthesis of thymine and cytosine, you can see erotic acid urea. Now the main problem is with an enzyme and, the, and that enzyme is uridine monophosphate synthase, UMP synthase. That is the main issue that's occurring. That is the main enzyme that is messed up. Now, uh, when it happens, when you have an issue with UMP synthase, you're not going to be able to convert erotic acid to UMP. That makes sense because this is erotic acid, and erotic acid is going to be converted to UMP via UMP synthase. Synthase meaning it synthesizes, right, pretty straightforward, into UMP. If this is not working, you're not going to have any UMP, which means your UMP levels are going to be low, which means your thymine and your cytosine levels are going to be low, but you're going to have high erotic acid levels. And that's how you get erotic acid urea. So when it comes to the findings, you're going to see macrocytic megaloblastic anemia. Why megaloblastic? Well, because you have decreased DNA synthesis, right? And that is because you have decreased pyrimidines. And if you don't have enough pyrimidines, you cannot, you cannot have DNA synthesis, and hence you're going to see megaloblastic anemias in this case. You will also see hypersegmented neutrophils. This is an image of a hypersegmented neutrophil. Essentially, instead of having the classic uh, three lobes to a neutrophil that most neutrophils have that you guys are probably used to. Hypersegmented neutrophils are going to have many, many more segments into their nucleus. And now that is not normal because uh, normally you should have about three at the most, right? Those, that's what your segmentation should look like. When a neutrophil is becoming a mature neutrophil, you're going to see that they have a lot of segments in your in their nucleus, and essentially they're going to go from let's say six to five to four to then three, and that is the mature neutrophil. If you have a defect in DNA synthesis, these neutrophils are not going to be able to mature properly. They're not going to be able to divide more uh, and uh, mature properly, and hence they're going to get stuck at, let's say, six, and they're going to have six neutrophils because they can't move in forward, and you get a hypersegmented neutrophil. That's how I like to remember it. That's how it always stuck in my mind. Now, you will also see erotic acid urea just as the name implies, right? You're going to see erotic acid crystals that are in the urine. You're not going to have any hyper uh, ammonemia, so no uh, increased levels of ammonium. It's just erotic acid crystals. And this is not going to improve with folate and vitamin B12. So this is very important. If you have a macrocytic 
megaloblastic, anemia. Okay, the first thing you want to give them is either going to be folate or vitamin B12. But if none of this works, then your last assumption should automatically be erotic acid urea. This is essentially a diagnosis of exclusion. So if you don't have folate, uh, if you don't have uh, uh, symptoms in improving with folate administration, if you don't see symptoms improving with vitamin B12 administration, you automatically should know you are dealing with erotic acid urea, which means you have a fucked up UMP synthase enzyme that's not working properly okay and then uh, you're also going to see failure to thrive and developmental delays in kids because they're not going to have eff efficient thymidine for normal erythropoiesis the erythropoiesis is going to be low which means they're going to have decreased rbc production and levels which means that their body is not going to be able to mature in a proper fashion because they're not getting proper nutrients and oxygen that they need in order to grow that's why you will see failure to thrive in certain cases the treatment is pretty simple you can give ump just bypass the pathway even though ump synthesis isn't working you can just administer ump it by itself or uridine triacetate and uh, essentially, like I said, this is just going to bypass the primidine pathway by giving you UMP. Nothing else in the pathway is messed up other than UMP synthase. So if you just supplement UMP, you get rid of uh, of the the you get rid of everything like the failure to thrive and uh, the hypersegmented neutrophils and the anemia, except for erotic acid urea. You're still going to see erotic acid crystals in these patients, and it's easy to test people and say you have a patient who has erotic acid urea and you give them UMP synthase. What side effect will you still see in these patients? And usually the go-to answer is going to be erotic acid crystals or even stones uh, in the urine. And that is all you need to know for step one when it comes to erotic acid, erotic acid urea. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you guys want us to cover a specific topic. Leave a comment below because we like to read them and we're always making new videos for you guys. You can follow us on social media. And if you guys don't know, this podcast is lecture can be available on your favorite podcast. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up.